Hi class, it's Bill continuing the week six demo on multi-dimensional arrays. We talked through the problem and we looked at how we're going to implement this using a two-dimensional array and we talked about the issues with the fact that we are off from reality by one. Uh, our arrays start at position zero of course in terms of their indexing so we're always going to be one off from sort of the real world of 12 months but it's month 11 is the maximum here. So we know that's going to be an issue and we'll handle that in a minute. We also created our enum, which is great, and then uh, Java or BlueJay has figured out that, that uh, the status is going to be used here, so, so it has put a little arrow for us, so that's fine. So let's go now and look at our main program and start to actually do some interesting coding here. Um, one of the things that we need to do is that we need to set the initial status. We know uh, for, um, from looking at the debugger that we have a bunch of null pointers, right? The array is full of null pointers. It doesn't really know what to put there as defaults. So we probably ought to go put something there. And in fact, it's pretty easy to see that we mostly want our statuses to be open. We don't have any bookings yet for the year, let's say. So we want to just go put all of that stuff in in terms of, you know, just calling it open. So that's pretty easy. We know that we have a two-dimensional array. We're going to need a nested for loop. Now here's a great example of the fact that you don't want to use i and j. It doesn't make sense here. You have context. In fact, in most problems you have a context, so use a real variable. For month equals zero, month is less than 12, right, month plus plus, and then we're going to do something else. Well, what are we going to do? Well, we need another loop, right, to, match, to uh, handle the inside. So we need to start with days, and days less than 31, and day plus plus. Right? And so that is our two-dimensional. To set all the values in a two-dimensional array, you need a nested for loop, one to handle the months and the inside loop to handle each day within that month. Now, how do we address these things? Well, we have a variable called sweet status. What is it? It is a reference to an array. How do I get to a specific item within that array? Well, you start first with the first dimension, which is going to be indexed by the month variable, that's our loop variable, and then our inside loop variable is day. Again, you have to be consistent here. If you try to switch these, you're going to get an, an out of bounds uh, error because you're going to try to index into the wrong, you know, the wrong place and use a number that's not valid. So as long as you're consistent, and I think again most problems have a real uh, good way to think of this. Month and day is the way we think of things, right? Month is major and day is minor, so this is a great order. And then we just want to set them equal to, and we're using an enum, so the way we do that is we say status dot and then we put the, the enumerated value we want to use. So now we have set up every day of the uh, every day of the year should be marked as open. It has not been booked yet. Now we have one other little problem and that is we have some days that are present but shouldn't be used, right? We have February 30th and February 31st. Not so good, right? We really want to kind of fix that. So we probably want to write that code, uh, but before we do that let's let's actually do another one, another function, and then we'll come uh, we'll come back to that in just a second. So let's come down here and let's write some code that sets a booking for us, right? Because this will be a building block. So I'm going to do Control M and I will replace this stuff in just a minute. But I want something that is a public static void and I want to call it uh, set booking, right? Because this is just going to be a basic building block. Now, what I need to do here is because I have the array declared in another function, it's not global, I'm going to need to pass it the array in order for it to operate on that. So, how do I do that? Well, you give it the type, right? Just like you did above. So, you're going to say this is an array, a two-dimensional array of statuses, right? It's an array of arrays of statuses. And I'm going to just call that status array. And then I'm going to pass it a month and a day and a status, right, that is of type status. And I'm going to then tell it to mark that booking, right? It's just going to be a way to make this easy. And this is going to handle our one-off day stuff because that'll just be easier for us. So let me paste in the header for you. 
So we've been good Java doc citizens and uh, we're going to want to do a precondition here and that is, I've given you a hint up here about that, uh, there's, there's a lot of times where we want to guard in this case because if somebody passes us month 18 that's probably not good. So let's put some little code that handles the preconditions which might say for instance if month is less than 1 or month is greater than 12 or day is less than 1 or day is greater than 31, right? Then we know we have a problem, right? So I'm going to just do this and I'm going to say throw new illegal argument exception, right? And then I pass it a message invalid day, uh, month or day specified. Right, so that's just going to sort of guard us against data that shouldn't ever really have come to us to begin to, to begin with. We don't have any return value, so that's fine. And then we also want to then uh, set the actual thing in question. So we're going to say status array. And again, how do we index into that? Well, we start with the month. But now they passed us month. We're going to use that as a human month, like 2 for February. We're going to make sure that we subtract 1 from both the month and the day when we index in to make sure we turn a human understandable month and day into our array value which is off by one. And then we're going to set that to the status. Alright, so that makes some sense. We just use this to set the status. Alright, does everything make sense here? The point I wanted you to see here is how you can pass in a multi-dimensional array to a function. Alright, so stop and pause and watch that if you'd like. All right, so now let's now write another thing, another function that's going to help us because we need to come and make a lot of NA days, right? We need to be able to uh, tell it um, which days of the year to mark off so that we are, uh, you know, we, we don't try to use February 31st. So I set up the header for us. So we want something called set NA days. <clears throat> and we're going to pass it in the array. In fact, you're going to find out that we're passing this array to virtually every single function. And so maybe if that's the case, we might want to make this a global. It might make a great argument that, hey, if you're passing it and manipulating it in virtually every single function, that probably ought to be a global. But, you know, we'll leave that for a different exercise for you. So now we need to go in and we can, and we can set the stuff. And we have our set bookings. So it's very easy for us to say set booking. And then we we just pass it along the status array that was passed to us, right? That's super easy. So pass that along, give it the day. So February 30th is set to status.na, right? So make sure that compiles, that looks good, and I'm going to fill out all the rest of these. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, we just do this to fill in the rest of these guys. Okay, so we've filled in these, which is great, except we have one little problem, and of course I feel compelled to line these things up to make them easy to see. We have one little problem, and that is we need to handle leap years, right? Because depending on the year, this is why I have included a year parameter, depending on the year, I might have a February 29th or I might not. So I'm going to actually have two sections of code. I'm going to have a little block that says set for all years, and then I'm going to have another one that says uh, handle leap year specifics. And this is easy enough. If we have the year handed to us, we can simply say if the year, right, and then we can use a modulo arithmetic, right, if the year divided by 4 has any leftovers, right, if the leftover from that division, the remainder from the division is not 0, then we know that it is not a leap year. Right, so I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to say set booking, and we're going to handle the last one, which is 229 is also status NA. So look at that, but that should make sense to you. Use modulo arithmetic. Now, by the way, we have a bug. This would be a Y2K bug because this is not all the leap year rules that exist in the universe. There is a division by 4, yes, but then there is also a division by, what is it, 400, and then there's another one. So you actually have, you know, but this code will get us to the time that we're all dead, and I think by the next time it would be wrong. It's, uh, it's uh, you know, long, long time from now, and the code will no longer be running. But 
that's how Y2K bugs happen. So interesting side. Okay, so we have this, and now we have set all of our NA days, which is great. So just for fun, let's come back to main, and let's go check some booking statuses, right? Uh, let's go just dump out some statuses so that we see what's going on. In fact, let's go set another booking just because it's easy. Set a booking. All right, so now we can say set booking and we can say pass along the suite status and I'm going to say for February 14th it is booked right so that's pretty easy right we're gonna set that status and say that that's booked and then I just wanna check some statuses to prove that everything is working as planned right so I'm going to say check some statuses alright alright so we're going to see what uh, what's happening for those dates and then let's go from there so let's compile that alright what's wrong with that um, okay let me see what's happening here Ah, well what's happening is we haven't actually written the check booking routine yet so I guess I can't do that uh, I guess we better write that first and so that's what uh, I will paste that in and that doesn't look very different from what we already have so let me paste that in for you real quick so here's the check booking status, right? So it looks pretty much like the other the other routine that we wrote, the other function. So you pass it the status array in a month and a day. We don't need the status because it's actually returning it. And if any of those preconditions, if those days are invalid, we you know we throw the exception. Otherwise, we just return the thing and we offset the month and the day as expected. So that's pretty straightforward. We should now be able to compile that successfully, and we should be able to run that now to see how it works. Alright, so here we go. Alright, so we see that this is 13th is open, this is booked, and the 31st is open. Hmm, that's kind of a problem. <clears throat> so that's something that we need to deal with. Okay, so the problem here is we wrote our we wrote our set initial status, but we forgot to call this nice thing that we created called NA days. Right? So because of that it set everything to open but it hasn't gone to set our NA days and we are setting them for 2016 so now if we compile that works if we go and run that again <clears throat> we should see that now we have open booked and NA cool okay so that looks a lot better now one other thing that we want to probably do and this is a small point but kind of uh, I think it's significant in this particular problem if you try to set a room booking there's one other thing that can go wrong what if someone tries to set a booking on February 30th right this thing's gonna work it's gonna say look there aren't 31 days it's it's not past 31 it's not out of range for every month but it's gonna let us set stuff right it's gonna let us book things on days that don't exist in this year so we probably want to add one more piece to our re our precondition and that says if the status array sub month minus one sub day minus one right and then we want to check and see if we've already marked it out of bounds right equals status dot na right so what we're saying here is if we have already marked it out of bounds now this will not keep our set na from working because uh, at this point if we're using set na it won't already have the status so this basically says hey if it's already been set to na which we would have done in that other function if it's already been set to na that's illegal now right that's hands off at this point so that will keep us from doing stupid stuff and it will um, and it will really help us to guard our code from that kind of stuff coming in so this is pretty darn good right this actually works pretty well so now if we look at our main program we have set a status to prove we can we've set all our initial status we've declared the array we've proved that we can set bookings and we have proved that we can get them back now notice I'm getting these things back and letting the enum render the two string for us, right? Enums already have a string, so basically that's where we're getting the data. But this is a pretty good example of showing you how this can work with a two-dimensional array, and it's really not that hard a problem, right? It's 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 not making us have that many more headaches to work. Now, in the last video, we're just going to talk about how we might extend this, right? And it's not going to be very many minutes. And in fact, actually, let's just do it here because I think it's not that long a problem. So let's talk about it real briefly.
correctly. What if we wanted to extend this problem? What if we have more hotel rooms? Right? So if we had more hotel rooms, why don't we just use a three-dimensional array? And again, we can say, you know, from major to minor, we use the three dimensions to represent the room and then the month and then the day. Now, conceptually, you can think of it as a cube, but at some point you have to stop thinking you're going to have spatial models for these things. You don't actually need the spatial model to make this work. So think about it. To declare this 100-room hotel, the status for every room, you can create something that looks like this. I say new status, and I say I want 100 in that dimension, and I want 12 items in this dimension, and I want 31 items in that dimension. I have a three-dimensional array now. The first index is room, second month, second or third day. Makes perfect sense. Now to initialize all these things you need three, right, four loops. You need a nesting of an additional loop to make that happen. So you have to think about that, but it certainly works. Now one side that you need, uh, a side that you need to think about is what if you wanted to have a separate array that stored the actual uh, room numbers because you might call them something other than room zero, right? You may want a real room number attached. Where would you put that? You can't put it in this array. Right? This array can only hold the single data type, which is the status. So you'd have to put it elsewhere. So it's a good, a good thought. Where would you store that? What kind of array would you do? And how would you associate it with this data? Great question. You'll get to answer that in your project that's on two-dimensional arrays, by the way. Now, another thing, maybe mind-blowing, is what if we then had four hotels, each with 100 rooms, Right? and we want to store all of that. Well, it's not really that big of a problem. We could have a four-dimensional array. The first dimension represents the number of the hotel. Second one is the number of the room, then the month, then the days. Four dimensions. Right? It's not more complicated. It's more data. And conceptually, you have to make sure you're indexing carefully into that. But really, the concept holds exactly true. It works exactly the same way. So I hope that you've seen a useful introduction to two-dimensional arrays and how to work with some of the coding, declaration, passing them, um, how to index into them and things like that. So hopefully that's a great introduction to you. We've accomplished what we set out to do here. Uh, we've made our, our demo work, so that brings us to the end. If you have questions, of course, post them in the forum or ask them in email, and I will talk to you later about these things. You get a chance to work on them in a project. Thanks for watching these videos.